That is not the issue. The issue here is what is happening to the 25 Gambians that were caught deported to this country. And the second 25 Gambians who came after. Where are they? And what is happening to them? Or what is difficult for them? That is the important. Yeah, I, I have the. I, no, it was not signed by 
when I have seen that document. So the most important thing for us to resolve this issue is to be able to speak with one voice. That is very important. And Germany, even if they have our Gambians, they cannot deport them. There are international law and treaties that they have to respect. That's why they are negotiating with us. And we almost understand also that all this discourse on this fell by the movement of the populace in, in Europe who want to make people believe that all their products are coming from the migrants. This is not true, actually. And they want to transfer some of their political problems here. And sometimes you will see them going, uh, talking to the press, saying things just to please their electorates. We have just seen it recently. And sometimes we do not respond. But this is something, even in Germany, where the language that the Development Corporation Ministry is speaking is completely different from the Minister of Interior. And I think we are basically on the same line with the Minister of, of uh, Development Corporation. As far as the good practices document is concerned, we have written to the European Union to invite them to have a discussion, to review it, because it's everything but not a good, a good practice document. I think that was sent from the US, and that we need to we need to look at it carefully. And they are open to it. And uh, Germany, when they are coming, talking about deportation, it's not the EU because they are not all they are all speaking with one voice. Some have told us they when sometimes when you remember when the former EU delegate was here, they will come and talk to us about deportation. But all the ambassadors will come and tell me that this is not the United States of Europe. And the EU is not the one directing the foreign policy of the European Union. We are sovereign state, we have to take out this. If he's speaking, he's speaking on this behalf, not on behalf of member states. So that we have to be very careful. Germany, you have a huge number of Germans there, and I think we need to re engage them. But COVID came and no one could move around. We need to sit and discuss with them to find a solution. Because we cannot also continue to. Deny the fact that these are Gambians will not accept them. It's our duty to accept them. It's our responsibility to accept them. I, and they, they are also, they have a responsibility also to support us. Because when these people were going, they did not go as criminals. Some of them became criminals in Europe. So they should help us integrate them. And what they call criminals also, not all of them are criminals. Because if you, if you comment, uh, traffic offense, they can classify you as criminals. That too, we have to be very careful. The hardcore criminals, they have to work with the in Ministry of Interior, give them the necessary support. If we have the support, we are <coughs> to, to welcome them. But we need to sit with them. But to be honest, the second bite that came, I don't know, 20. I heard about it here. I don't know how they came, who gave them the papers, because the embassy is not that I for so for certain, I know that the embassy did not give them the travel. Documents. So we need to go to the bottom of that to know where they did they get those travel documents to be able to come to the Gambia. Because Germany also does not have the right to take people, bundle them and put them on the plane and bring them here. That's all I have to say And who is here? Mu, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong. Uh, the, after your visit, the document that you are using when you are having a meeting with the stakeholders. Which document we are using to discuss with the stakeholders? Okay, um, thank you very much, fellow Mr. members of the Now, the documents that we are talking, I would say, pretty really based on the uh, report that we wrote when we came back from Germany, because I remember when we engaged the German authorities, uh, we expressed concern that if there is to be a massive deportation of established, that would definitely trigger some kind of social harm. So the agreement that we had with them, the German was that there is not going to be any massive deportation of, of Gambians, but then they are ready to work with us. And that is contingent upon us accepting the 25 Gambians that are so-called criminals. Okay. Now, we, we, the, 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 the condition that we gave them, and currently from our world, uh, most of these Gambians are about to return home. But what they are saying, those who have a clean slate, those who have been committed 
enterprise, we want to see how we can work with the German government for them to be given the opportunity of being. Did you share that document with, with the committee? Yes, I'm a committee. No, no, not only this committee, with the government committees, because we are part of that committee. We share it, we share it with the, 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 the team that went with us from the National Assembly. And, and also the Office of the Vice President. Uh -huh. And also the Office of the Vice do you want to offer advice? Well, that's in this circumstance. No, but you are part of the community. No, no, no. If you don't have to receive any other person for that community, and the Ministry of Interior is my name. Most of the world will be sent you a copy, but I can check. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, don't worry. Don't check the record. And the other thing, when you get notification, discuss on it. Discuss on the report. What can, what not? You report on the report without even if even though if, even if you have ten, that I'm not quite sure. But when the discussions on the on the on the area of uh, recommendation, the Ministry of Interior, who is a stakeholder to this, should have been informed and should be part of that discussion. And we are never informed. He is the focal person there. May I just come here? Uh, and just before you come, Your Excellency, now I've also been informed that for the travel document, how they travel. You have immigration liaison officers stationed in Germany and Italy who are issuing travel documents without the mission knowledge. That also we have to go on record for it. Why is that information coming from the minister? They just informed me. I, I, I saw it in our files. Uh -huh. This was uh, in 2019, I think there was some kind of an agreement between uh, Interior and Baden Wurttemberg. But then I later found out from our mission in Brussels that two officials from the immigration department have been stationed somewhere in, you know, issuing travel documents. So I even engaged the German service officer and I said, this is a normal practice because, from my experience, it's the, it's the embassy that should issue. So how has it happened? And he fully explained the thing. I personally told him, I think to some extent, I'm sorry, but I think you have ticked the government in doing but this is not right. This is not right information. So that has to be corrected. Because it is the, it is the embassy that's the issue to travel to and not any uh, 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 and, and later on, I remember, I because I remember when this issue came to my table, we realized that they went there through an arrangement with the immigration department through the Frontex program. So as you rightly put it, they were tricked and sent people there, and they were issuing travel documents without the knowledge of the, the embassy under their jurisdiction. Yes, if, if I may come in, with regards to your trip to Madisquis, um, to, to German, with the National Assembly members, okay, in fact, when the issue came, um, we realized that um, the current affairs is going with um, the National Assembly. And then, um, I know, um, a few days that uh, you know, came up with the, with, the, with the point that, but I think the Ministry of Interior is very key in this. If current affairs is going, I guess the Ministry of Interior should be part of that, that team. But then it has never happened. So when you people came, the report was written. But as a ministry, and I'm the former partner of my person, I have never seen the report regarding your visit to um, a district. Well, as a technical working, um, as a technical um, uh, NCM technical, we also met. But the report did not come to NCM technical. And I could remember you um, basically proposed to meet the NCM. But I think the NCM was not part of it. He said, okay, then if I'm um, come to the National Assembly, this call the matter. So the guys, they came from, 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 from German, and they were to meet the, 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 the NCM. He said, we are not aware of this um, uh, trip. At the same time, also, we don't um, see the report. It's better you go to the National and, and, and the team that have gone, gone there and the National Assembly, and the team that have gone and discussed with them. Maybe later, you will call the National Assembly for what they have come and done with them. And then you can see what happens because it's going to be the report. But that has never happened to my knowledge. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, with the issue of the um, body book that you were talking about, like the initial that, that, that you signed, um, and maybe uh, the world law was still not with them, 
I've never, I never knew about an abyss before, and I'm sharing it. And probably, probably, maybe it could be between maybe immigration and death, but not in the ministry. This one is not one. This one is not one. We are not abyss. We are not abyss. Now, this is something that we have discussed in a major different in the We are not here to put them on each other. And it is not right to use that approach. We all know where we are coming from, and we know how institutions have not been doing their jobs properly. We also have injected a very difficult situation. Documentation was a problem. We have to accept that. And we have a clear task of having to respond to these things, and it becomes a very challenging and daunting issue, especially on matters like this, where it just comes to our table, and we have the whole world and the global order is determining how people are getting in terms of this migration phenomenon, and we are there to get behind. One, one thing that is first that we have to admit is that communication is not very good among the various sectors, and we have to accept that. We, we have to acknowledge some of our weaknesses in order to be able to do the right thing and address the issues in a way that we create synergy. All these issues that we are discussing, the Ministry of Interior has a very key role to play there. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs has a very, very key role to play there. They are the conflicts through which everything is going to go. As the Office of the Vice President, our coordinating role is to make sure that we create synergy between all the sectors that have some implication with regard to this, and we are doing that very well. I'm not doing my job there. What is happening is that when it comes to travel, people tend to hijack it and do what they want and don't go really through the due processes. And because we don't go really through processes, when the time of accountability comes, it becomes problematic. People try to be on the offense. This is what is happening. Now that you have called us, and I'm very pleased with this, I think we have to look at this objectively and critically so that we open a pathway and deal with it in a very professional manner and a manner that is going to help us have solutions to move forward. Now, I want to say that communication is key and that has not been going on very well. But being the chair of the National Coordination Mechanism, I am always asserting my rights to say meetings are supposed to be. I'm not seeing the meetings. I know there are other technical groups that are supposed to be working together, like the immigration is the focal person. Then you have to, uh, over there, we had Sandra before, and now we have to, in my right, we are a democrat. No, it's Kamara. Now, they all have their focal persons. And at the end of the day, we agree on the modus operandi. Where I think I have said that every quarter we have to sit down. I want all the sectors to come so that we look at the process, problem that is going on. The letters are written, they are public to read. But they pass through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. You understand? There are challenges, of course. Sometimes there are delays, sometimes we don't get it until we come to the meeting and we said we discuss the matters. And I said I don't have a copy of this. You see, it is not the fault of the ministers. But it's the way the management is operationalizing some of the communication issues, and we have to do it. It's a problem, and we will look at it. Now, when it comes to the issue of the cooperation, like the Minister for Foreign Affairs said, you know, when you deal with diplomacy, you look at bilateral relations or multilateral relations. There are certain countries that have their political interests within the country and have their bodies who are very powerful, but not in the hands of affairs. And because they are not in the hands of affairs, they will have the will and the boss to say this is what needs to be done. But when the chips are down, it has to go through the right channel. And that is what happened with the case of the part and the in there. It was good that you traveled, you went, and these were very good deals according to your report. But that's what you have I have had. Because we have to be responsible to take our responsibility and do it. Despite the fact that the political economy, the global political economy, is determining a lot of issues that we have to recognize and we cannot be left behind. If we go and there is this opportunity that the National Assembly members have come and they have come, 
I think the weakness is there is that I did not see that report it was not important to me and I it was not discussed at the national at the national convention mechanism level. We are not aware of that. Those who went also did not talk about it. I want to register that very clear. If they had done, I am always running after what they call low and improves. Anything that comes to the Gambia and is something that will take us one step ahead, I go after it, irrespective of where it is coming from. Now that did not happen. Now that this has come to this stage and you have gone and come, and there were a lot of things that have happened, you should have followed it. If those who have report and have communicated and made the report and brought it there, we will incorporate it into whatever strategy we have. I want to accept that weakness. And I want to tell you that we are going to address that. Now that I do. Number two, the issue you raised is very specific, and I think we have to deal with it correctly and directly. There was a communication which I asked because I was going to see you because we have uh, we have postponed this meeting twice for three times. This is the third time we are coming up for time. And I said we must be there to go and deal with this because it's a very sensitive matter, it's important and it has ramifications for our image internationally and even in the country. We have to go. Today I am happy that all of us are here. We are here to deal with it in a very professional way. I'm not blaming anybody. In fact, I'm ready to take all the game and to deal with it. You understand? Now, I requested from one of my staff to say, please make sure that you get me information from the Ministry of Family Affairs. Because these letters, whatever communication happens, it is the window and the channel by which everything is going and coming. If I don't have it, I please go and check. And this is what I have with regards to that. I prepared myself. Gambia's mother deportation in Germany is specific. I don't know whether it belongs to them or whoever because it was not discussed. And I don't know, but I took time to go and dig it out to know what the situation is. It says, one, 16,000 Gambians registered for asylum in Germany and 4,000 were rejected who are currently facing potential deportation. The proposed solution, according to the government, is considering the substantial number of Gambian migrants in Germany, particularly in Berlin, given that most of them are irregular in the sense that they do not fulfill the legal requirements to stay in Germany, and also given the socio-economic and political upheaval the deportation would engender in the Gambia. The Gambia could propose the following action plan to be jointly implemented with Germany. However, the foreign migration agreement binding the Gambia and Germany is through the EU bloc, like was said by the minister. In considering, he also said, in considering the undermentioned recommendations, it could only be subsumed under the operational conclusion on return modalities of the EU Gambia migration agreement that is being reviewed. One, the Gambia accept to receive all of its citizens who have been convicted by German courts for having committed a serious crime to a sentence of imprisonment now and in the future, and that the Gambia will be giving support to funds uh, and funds to prepare the grounds for their reception and rehabilitation. That was one of the arguments. Two, that all other Gambian citizens who have been identified and who are officially resident in Germany at the time of this argument will be offered an opportunity to be trained, educated, and to work for at least the next five years or until they choose to return voluntarily. Three, that the Gambia will accept to receive without delay all its citizens who will arrive in Germany after the date of this agreement and who have no right to remain there. It will also make a declaration that henceforth there should be no fresh irregular migration from Gambia to Germany. Four, the Gambia invite Germany to obey its diplomatic presence in the Gambia, including offering Schengen visa for Gambian citizens. Five, that Germany will increase the number of Gambian citizens to arrive legally in Germany with scholarships for studies and set up vocational and language training facilities in the Gambia to help motivate Gambians meet the requirements for legal work migration in Germany according to German skilled workers immigration law. Six, Germany to facilitate for Gambians, to Gambian seasonal workers, especially those who work in the agricultural sector, work for a period of six months or so and return to the Gambia and vice versa. Seven, Germany to upgrade different development corporations with the Gambia to the level of the private country 
and would encourage German investors to invest into the foreign productive sectors of the Gambian economy, A, agriculture, in terms of creating value addition enterprise in view of job creation, you are a but you are exactly leaving from Japan. This is just received today, yesterday, when I was going to come today and I did my homework and I said it was not communicated. That's why I said communication is the issue. Because when I read this document and I said, what a great document that is this. It was not brought to our attention. We did not see it. So when people travel, they come back. We in the office of the vice president, what we do is, once you go, you are under obligation to come up with a report and give us the report. So that an <coughs> report that comes, because I am very curious and I want to engage constructively. I will read that report. Whoever travels to come, I did not receive the report of the travel to written back. I did not see it and it was not disclosed to us. I requested for it and it was reached out from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. That's what I want to see. Now, the problem is communication. I am not saying, I'm not blaming anybody. But now that these things are put in place, if it has brought to, been brought to the National Coordination Mechanism attention, if that was here, by now, we would have done. Because he has given a very good report on that. 25 percent they came. When they came, they were all successfully integrated with their families. The other 20 that was there, we don't know. So those who travel, the purpose of having a coordination mechanism is to bring the actors, because various sectors have their own responsibility. So for proper accountability and transparency, the Office of the Vice President is coordinating these things so that we get to hear from all of them and come up with a synopsis that will give us a path of action to move forward. That did not happen. And I want to take blame and responsibility for that. There is no need to pull and push. The purpose is you are calling us and this is in the right direction and I appreciate it for us to speak to each other and make sure that we move this process forward. This is one of the most beautiful documents regarding migration and the modalities that needs to be done. But we did it was a division trust. And I want to be very honest and transparent in this process. It's not about the, the government, it's about the Gambia and what we should do as a responsible uh, district in what we are doing. Well, I'm very happy that we are saying that what, what you are reading there is the central document. And the arguments that we are making at In fact, what Germans promise us was that they were calling, when you are calling them, they don't call it, they say, don't, we are in prison. They are trying to in prison. Those ones they were going to send back. There was no compromise on that. And we agreed. But apart from that, Mr. Mr. Moore was there. We prevailed upon them to keep the rest, whether they are documented or not documented. I told them that their best contribution to what was happening in Gambia was to train those people and give them skills. And those in the agricultural sector, since it was it was not throughout the year. When the season is over, they will be allowed to come back to Gambia. When the season is they can go back to Germany again and work in the agricultural sector. We are living on this with Germans. But what is surprising me is that the effort that we have made in this committee, honestly, if they were backed by the executive, Your Excellency, I promise you that no Gambia will leave the German territory. When Rahi, no government will leave the government territory. I follow this matter. He, the foreign minister who, 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 the last meeting I had with the president was him, the second general, and myself on this issue. It, I was there to the president twice, once, twice, three times on this issue because the Germans made it very clear to us that if there was no reaction from the Gambia, they would back everybody. And no one will convince me that they cannot do that. They can do it. Because Germany is a separate territory, they have the right to are packing Gambia and sending them out. They are packing, I've seen that here, they pack non Gambians here and send them out. Until I went to the Minister of the Interior at one time, that was Mr. Dillard, Mr. Cisse. I said, and coincidentally, how 
ni amba sana ni ndaka da sen dia hizira ta kem alwa ken de da pati ba du bosma ana wen dia tu se exactly the same thing on dit la propos to him that i will conduct a workshop for your people and says that you only protocol on the faith movement of people assigned by the us he agreed i went to nigeria by the time i came i don't know what happened he was dismissed i don't know why he was dismissed but he was dismissed he wasn't there so what the problem is let me say this chairman can send gambians and they will do it if there is no positive reaction from this country There is no doubt about that. Me and colleagues of that because there is no ministry I have not we have not had this cause of it in Java, and there is no political party yet that we have not this cause of it. But they all agree with what we have done, and that's why I am very positive this for that if our efforts were backed by the executive, not apart from the twenty five who were in prison, nobody would have left Java, but because. I want you you are telling me as if nothing has happened if it is now that the vice president is having no little thing that is yes i just see said that i was just i like to ask for it mr chair uh we do respect my seven supervisors we are not here to blame or to ask them blame for anything but move is here and they will be using book i i think i will let you know in fact i personally gave and then i want you to bring all the evidence that this no, document was i personally in fact, fact i personally gave the document to the then deputy commander said i think that travel yes travel yes how was it how was it no yes you can pass it i can't believe that it's true no i want to bring all all the i can do that i mean i mean i'm not putting you short yeah i am as i said earlier i am not here to I am not accusing okay. anybody. What I am saying is that I made efforts to get this, and indeed, yesterday when I requested for this information, it was the deputy who gave it to me. It's only yesterday, before closing time, that I got it. Now I'm not blaming anybody. What it requires, when this happened. You can give it to someone me and say, look, we have come back and we have enough for the nation and it's in there. So that you tell us, because it was attended by a very high power, the National Assembly members who have gone. You, you have done your bit because you've gone to see the president. You have spoken to the president and the team that you brought together are the right people to be there. The Minister for Foreign Affairs is there, the Minister General is there, but you did not filter down to me. And if it did not filter down to me and it did not filter to the National Coordination Mechanism, There is nothing I cannot call a meeting to say let us discuss this. One lie is a lie. If this was brought to my notice, if it did to you, or you give it to me, even informally, I will do something out of it. Because I am very much committed to the issue of migration. So I want to appeal. Let us not keep on pushing and further. So I want to appeal and beg you. I was going to put yes, that. Yes, let us appeal. Please. One settled there. I'm working now. I'm going back. Is there? But let's deal with the matter here. Yes. Presented on the agenda. Uh, I want to use the office video. Yes. Hello. We can we can discuss at our level. Yes. But there is a need for the parliamentarians to know where the laps are, and you can you can you can advise us on that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because if this particular document. is distributed and discussed we will not have been in the problem of every day sitting around the technical team coming up every day to the officer the vice president to discuss on the repatriation we have seen it i'm not i'm not disputing the fact that it could have been distributed but why is it that it has never been discussed in and on, almost every month or every two or two two or two, two, two weeks that cause is is very yeah. i make sure that the vice is chairing that task force yes. and this we all struggle that we are this in the stock of this position this matter was never this thing and we all know we are all aware that germany is the one keep bringing the right i just know so why is it that it's not, it's not all the effort, all our discussion is centered on germany so if this statement was discussed we would have been in the situation that we are the strategy is very clear no. 
I'm not blaming anybody, but I want you to say, Mr. Chair, Honorable Chair, what I want to say here is that it is very clear that the problematic is on our side. I want to acknowledge that. The problematic is on our side, and we have to go and do our own work and make sure that we communicate. We come up with a clear plan of action. If you would agree with me, we have come up with a very clear, clear, clear plan of, a plan of action on how to deal with this and start engagement through the relevant institutions. The Minister of the Interior is responsible for the parties, but it cannot do anything if the Minister of Foreign Affairs does not communicate the information and act. So they have to work in synergy with all the other relevant institutions. So I am appealing. Now that this is clear, because I didn't tell them I have this yesterday, it was before closing time I got it, because I don't face any panel without preparing myself. I don't do that. So I got it, and I got some more information. So all I want to say is, I am appealing that this is today we are here, the ministers are here, it's a very rare occasion. We will go back, I will call immediately, next week, a national coordination mechanism meeting. And in that process, you will be invited in that meeting, because we are trying to prepare the path of the migration um, compact, which will be presented in May. I want you to be there, so these are the issues that we are going to deal with. But to make it very clear that what the Minister of Foreign Affairs says in terms of dealing with other entities that are not within the, that, 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 that deals with nation states, it has to go through the right channel, and that goes not go through there, and we have to accept so that we understand how we engage bilaterally and multilaterally. Yeah. Well, yes, yes, thank you, President Mukira, uh, Mr. President, Vice President, and the good ministers. I think uh, the lapses are now identified, and then I think we'll appreciate our concern. What we need now is action. We are really concerned about the plight of the families who are there, uh, and that action needs to be done. Now uh, you have agreed to gather your act, you will get action as the Vice President said, and the soonest the better. Yes. Let us come to the President as a country. But let us agree. I think the, the report spells it out very clearly. Yes. Those that they consider as it's good to also distinguish the crimes, the misdemeanors and the crimes, the crimes that are that are that are, that are, that are, that are in to society, we can accept those. But but for those who the others who are there, it's better we have arrangements that they can be kept there clearly. If they are really interested in our democracy, our fledgling democracy, to support our process here to make sure that there is instability, there is stability in our country, there is peace, to promote democracy is better than they support those governments who are already there. Because uh, in 2018, I personally undertook a tour to Europe, and when I came back, I reported to uh, the Honorable Minister of the Foreign Affairs what I did. I went to seven countries, and basically it was to look at the situation of the migrants who are there. I've been to Milan, to Germany, in Italy, in Milan. It was, it was terrible. So over 100 young people sleeping in the streets, those harsh weather conditions. And the position that I was promoting, and not as what is written today in the report, that those governments were there, let them be trained. Let them be trained, acquire skills, and I'm telling you, if they are trained and they acquire these skills, they will not be drawn. Because they will, they, they, will not, they will allow them to be drawn. They will find the occupation for them. I think this is the position. This is the language that both of us are speaking, the legislature and the executive, that uh, let us engage. So it's better that, that, that we do engage. So the sooner, the better. Yes, the sooner, the better. I assure you that I will do my best with the team now that we are here and together. I want you to, and I, what I want to say here is that let some of our ministers know that we are against them, I'm against them, I am not against anybody. We are dealing with matters that we are accountable for, and we must take our responsibility. The problem we are facing is communication gap. If we are communicating and being transparent with what we are doing, it will be easy. And I am ready to take the blame. I will take the blame. Give me the time soonest so we get back to you. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. Before, before I, I just want to let you tell <laughs> We are here as a government. It's a team. <laughs> not that one is blamed or you consider not being blamed. That's not a problem. But I want, for the sake of clarity, for us to know to identify the gaps. The gap. But for certain, I have trust and confidence in my team that they, because I know this were a very meticulous young man, 
and they've been doing so who I want you to prepare all the documents, everything and share it with the National Assembly and with the Office of the Prime President. And certainly you have meetings. You must have taken minutes. Yes, yes. The minutes also will clarify everything. And uh, sir, if I may say something, your excellency, Prime uh, 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 made a very salient point, and that is uh, what is the next uh, previous step in this process. I remember in in Germany, we we um, promised that government will treat a high power delegation to Germany to engage the, the German government. When the the international when the German Minister for International Cooperation visited Uganda, this was like two or three months ago, or four four months ago, October. He had audience with His Excellency the, the President, and uh, we assured him at that level that for some time this year. Yes. We will we will feel a high powered government delegation to go to Germany yes. to discuss is is like this. And I I I remember exactly what he said. And uh, what he said was that will be highly appreciated by us Germans and I am sure it will be very, very positive. So my question is once we we we, we send a high powered government delegation to Germany to engage them, none of these issues will We'll, 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 I'm not giving it that, but before that, identify the lapses so that we do not sure. commit the same mistake. So yes. make sure that sure. you prepare all the documents, share it with the National Assembly and with the Office of the Yes, what I want to do is I really appreciate what he said. It's important because it's lack of access to this information, that's why we are having differences in opinion. If I had access to it today, this would have been the basis by which we go to this course. I got it just yesterday. I've made it very clear. Now, the, the second thing I wanted to say here is that the visit has been proposed a long time ago when it came to the issue of Martin Luther King. And I was told, the Minister of Foreign Affairs said, he said, we cannot do it with the Wittenberg directly, but we have to go. And he that was right. So, so what he is saying, apart from the information, the lapses also are when people come and want to do certain things that is not line, in line with international diplomacy ethics, we cannot accept it. Because as a country, we must be seen to embrace international best practices and standards. He told it, and I have, they have been personally been calling me when I people going to the event. I said that is in the hands of Minister of Foreign Affairs. If it is me who is coming, it has to go through the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs will advise. I have said that to them. And then they will, we will constitute the team that is going. But it cannot be like, and what he said it, and I did my research, he was right. That's all I want to say. First, the first practical thing is to bring all the documentation that is supposed to be in my view. We will be brought to the National Coordinating Mechanism and then follow diligently on the other correspondences with regards to the processes that are needed for us to fill in that type of delegation that will be comprehensive. If you agree with me, Honorable Chair, I want to just appeal that you allow us to go back and do our homework and I get back to you soon. No, of course, we, 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 we are not we are not uh, we are able to that because that we want something positive to happen. Yes, and you know, I don't want to talk but, uh, but uh, because if I talk that's going to be an explosion. Because that uh, the amount no I'm very serious, the amount of work I've done with this money could well that if I talk it would be an explosion. Big explosion. But I I leave you to go and then you come back. But please know that what we are doing is to help you address an issue. Absolutely. I don't want to blow the trumpet of the committee, but the work we have done in Germany did that whole life. If there was no COVID, I think COVID was what one has hindered the progress. Because otherwise you would have gone there. If you had not gone, the president would have, would have gone there, or you would have gone there. That was the arrangement. But COVID came, and that was no time. But now, you must do something. The Germans are prepared to help. This, this document, you refer to EU document, it is not hostile to bilateral negotiation. There is a pros in it. So why can't we have a problem with Germans? And I'm telling you, I don't want to blow my, our trumpet, but 
You go to what had happened in Germany, but we didn't go. Italians went to us to go there. The Spaniards went to us to go there. The Swiss just next year, just two days ago. They are also when they want to do exactly the same thing, follow the problem to solve, and you can't. They just my office. And we are doing on that. So, we are Anyway, Kamara, you want to say something? Yeah, I don't want to repeat any more. It's just to enforce what the chair said. I mean, this is a national problem. I keep on telling people, this is let us not politicize this situation. You are either affected directly or you are not. I have two of my uh, blood brothers in Germany undocumented. In fact, when they call, I keep on telling them, come back. As you speak, they keep on calling that they don't have documents. So that was, uh, the willingness is to have a little bit of to maintain this peace. So what is the way for? Let's work together and then they are like, made so that the problem can solve and then this thing is being of the past. And because, I mean, being the elected representative of the people, they keep on blaming us, they keep on asking us, you are not doing A and B, you don't know the country. The social media, is there anything that happens, they keep on reporting. And most of the time, on a negative basis, they report. So let's do something to make sure that the problem is amicably solved. Uh, well, I want to inform you that there is a very highly organized champion in Germany who are trusted by the German government. They work hand in hand with Germany. But in Germany, there is a problem they refer to this organization. It's there. They are there. I think the, the foreign minister must have met them. He may met them. And Mr. Mu was there when he met them. And they are still working. So it, 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 it's, it's not really not difficult. Anyway, we will allow you to go back. But please, don't take another, I don't know how long, because this is 2020. No, 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 no. This is no. This is Oh, this is This is too long. Okay. The way I am feeling, you don't know. The way I am feeling. Okay. After the independence celebration, who will not be? You will run away from me. Me? Okay. I have to run away from you. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Yes. Can we just, uh, the next item it has to do with uh, this diaspora voting. We've got registration and voting, which was scheduled by IEC and one day and everything was programmed and all of a sudden it disappeared in the thin air. Okay. But Honorable Minister, Honorable Vice President, Vice President, there are 275,000 Canadians outside the country. And they have the right to vote in this country. That's what the law says. Because they are also contributing to this country. The amount of remittances that are coming from, from, from the diaspora is in billions every year. That alone qualifies them to become voters in this country, even to become represented in this country. So this is what we want. And, uh, there is even a pending bill in the, this, in the Ministry of uh, Justice which is about this, on this issue. Yes. I, I, I don't know whether you know yeah, about it. Yes, just to come to the study, we are also taking note of that issue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we are very pleased again to come to the as you said, we are working as a tribe and it is about Gambia, it is about going to Gambia more. And Whatever we are doing, ushering, uh, maintaining and managing a democracy is based on rules and regulations. It's a rules based regulations, particularly when it affects the country. Now, the issue of uh, uh, voting for diaspora, the, the political will be what is already expressed. And I believe you all are aware of that. That we have recognized that they have rights. That is the reason why we have the HP done which is uh, uh, represented here by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the diaspora. And apparently, um, efforts are being done, which you have been rightly mentioned, about the processes and procedures. In a democracy, you can make a policy pronouncement, but it is going to be based on following rules and frameworks, laws that are going to create a living environment, for that to happen, and I think it's going to be better than me that that is already on your hobby about that. We have agreed that the diaspora will be voting, and that we have to put the legal frameworks and the processes in place which is going on. 
a lot of work has been going on, but we must understand that we need to have that flavor within the constitution, constitution that says we have the right to do and this need to happen, and that process is going to. Now, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is meeting and committed to engaging all relevant stakeholders, particularly the Ministry of Justice, diaspora representatives, and independent electoral commission to finding solutions to the hurdles in building the professionalization of diaspora voting and representation. The diaspora directorate of MOPA has a series of engagements with relevant stakeholders since the first quarter of 2021. This included online meetings and consultations with representatives of diaspora associations, the IEC, and the Ministry of Justice. The directorate also had engagements and consultations with MOPA mission abroad in terms of their capacity in coordinating elections under this their jurisdiction. With support from the Migration and Sustainable Development Project, MSDB, studies were carried out to confirm countries whose laws permit Gambians with dual citizenship to vote, countries in substantive Gambian population to qualify voting, taking place in those jurisdictions. Polling stations have also been demarcated in identified cities as follows. Well. In terms of representation, the diaspora constituency has been demarcated as follows well based on population concentration throughout Africa, Africa, South and Eastern Europe, North and Western Europe, Americas and the Caribbean, Middle East, Asia, and Oceania. In view of the above, MOVA's position is to start the discussion with relevant stakeholders, including Ministry of Justice and IEC, especially to look at the legal problem in leading the operationalization of the diaspora voting. As we are already aware, there is a constitution that is coming up. There are other procedures that have to be followed. And the research that was done was very clear about the hurdles that we have to take in order to make things happen, to translate that political will into substantive equality for those in the, uh, the, in the diaspora. Uh, the main criteria for deciding the process and location in the and the diaspora process to take this are countries and locations with the highest number of Gambians, countries and locations where national or local laws do not allow diaspora voting, and countries and locations where it is reasonably practicable and safe to undertake diaspora voting. So these are all things that are going. I don't need to go into that. I make sure we send you the copies of what the research is all about and how it has been demarcated and so on. But with all this done, I am speaking to people who are quite adept in lawmaking as national assembly members. You know that nothing happens without the law, and nothing happens without a bill. And that is the process by which we can actually actualize everything. So looking at what I have presented on behalf of the executive, and also the research that is being done working with partners in the diaspora, it is obvious that the political will is quite clear that we are going to take hold of the environment and that there was the constitution that is going to come. We also have to address it so that it can take place. We pray that everything to be in place. We will come up with a bill that will take note of that. And you are the people to make it happen. So we are together in it. We are in sync. And even the statistics have been put in. And all the criteria that is needed is put there. And the participation of the diaspora and those that have the right to be there are also considered. So we are in the right context. Things are moving, but people have to be patient. Because when you say that we are going to do this, you cannot do it without going to do process. And that's where we have the social media, the representation, you have this information, you have a lot of things being said. But it is obvious and very clear that the path that they are taking to empower the diaspora is a right fundamental rights and part of their civil liberties are set right in our constitution to so get engaged and we are doing the right procedures for it to happen. So I would invite your patience and all of us working diligently and effectively and efficiently in this process to make sure that the commitment that is made will be fulfilled and through the right procedure without leaving gaps and having to go back and forth but for the due process is going to happen. So we are on track we are ready and we will end it and we cannot do it without you. I believe that's what I want to say, except you want to say something? You want to say something? A lot of things are being done. The story has been done. All right. Okay. Yes.
Yes, thank you very much, Chair. Yeah. Honourable Vice President, thank you for the excellent goodwill of the executive with regards to this issue. But I just want to say that the concern that we have as it exists provides for that for a good thing because it's saying that every Gambia yes. is entitled to register. Yes. Either to vote, from, from, to vote, to vote, to vote or to offer, to register to vote and also to offer him himself for herself. Mm -hmm. But we understand uh, the challenges of logistics, the modalities to to develop, you know, in terms of facilitating that, you understand that there's a challenge that they need to be scared out. Yeah. But as you said, we are really looking forward to the concern. They ought to be participating in the process yeah. of this country, yeah. particularly in the election. Yeah. So the, we would also welcome, as you said, this new constitution in the country deserves, we deserve a new yeah. constitution that is more comprehensive than the existing one. Yeah. But I just wanted to say that the constitution as it is, Provides for guys for reporting. But those are the challenges that we will really, really appreciate. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, I think we can end this meeting now. The prayer. I look forward to seeing you very soon.